All right, hello everybody. Welcome to the first part of the video for section 3.1. Jumping into a whole new set of topics or looking at a new uh, type of function here at the beginning of three point chapter three and really looking at uh, kind of three primarily, primary new types of functions in chapter three. Okay, so let's first look at four sets of functions here. So you have f of x equals x to the fourth, g of x equals x to the seventh, k of x equals x to the tenth, and p of x equals x to the one hundredth. And if you look at these, you hopefully notice that they all have something in common, right? What would be that thing they have in common? Right, they're all something raised to a power. So here we see x raised to the fourth, to the seventh, to the tenth, and the one hundredth. And because they're all functions raised to a power, we have a special name for these. These are called power functions, okay? So a power function is a function that can be represented in the form f of x equals x to the p, or really your function is equal to a variable raised to a power, okay? So it's not always x. It could be t or q or r or s or w or any variable you want. The important thing is it's raised to a power where that power is a number, not a variable. And if you think about it, there's actually a bunch of functions we've already studied uh, in our toolkits in particular that are examples of power functions. So for example, one that may come to mind right away is f of x equals x squared. The quadratic function is a power function. Uh, f of x equals x cubed, the cubic function is a power function. Uh, this one, f of x equals x, that's a power function. Can we see why that is? Right, because you could write that as x to the first. So that's just a uh, power function there. Okay. And then there are others that are kind of hidden, but they are all examples of power functions. So one, would be f of x equals square root of x, which at first may not look like a power function, but you may recall that when we have a root of something, we can rewrite that as an exponent. So the square root of x is actually the same as x to the one half. And notice now that is a power function. And because that's a power function, another one that we know could be a power function would be the cubed root of x, which can be written as x to the one third. So that's also a power function. So our, our cubed root and our square root functions are both power functions. Um, another one that is kind of a hidden power function is one over x, so the reciprocal function. So it can be written as one over x to the first. And then we can also move that x out of the denominator and when we do that, the power, the x to the first actually becomes negative, so this becomes x to the negative first. So that one is also a power function. That then leads to one more. It's kind of a hidden power function, and that would be f of x equals one over x squared, so a reciprocal squared function can be written as a power function. And similar to what we did with one over x, we could write that as x to the negative second power. Okay, so it turns out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of our toolkit functions are also power functions. Sweet. Uh, let's look at something that's called long run behavior of a function. And basically what this means is we're gonna explore what happens as the input values get really, really large. So as they go towards positive infinity, or as they get really, really small. So as they go towards negative infinity. So let's start with the first one here, f of x equals x squared. Um, so first of all, if you recall, that's one of our toolkits. The graph of this function looks something like this. So it goes up and up on both the left and the right. 
And if we analyze the long run, what's called the long run behavior here, we first of all want to look at as x goes to positive infinity, so as the inputs increase. So we're thinking about as we go along the horizontal axis this way, right, as those values get bigger and bigger, what do we see happening on the function here with the outputs as we go to the right? Well, it looks like what we get is that f of x, which represents the outputs, those are going towards negative, or sorry, not negative infinity, positive infinity, right? Because the graph is shooting up. So we'd see there that as x goes to positive infinity, f of x goes to positive infinity as well. Well, what happens if we go the other way? So now we do as x goes to negative infinity. So now we're going to the left. So this way, right? What do we see the outputs doing? Well, notice that the graph also there is going up, right? So what we see is that as x goes to negative infinity, it looks like the outputs, f of x, is also going to positive infinity, okay? So in this case, clear this stuff out. If we were gonna write just the long run behavior for x squared, Okay, we would see that as x goes to positive infinity, f of x also goes to positive infinity. And then as x goes to negative infinity, we also see f of x going to positive infinity. Okay. All right, let's look at what happens for x cubed here then. So again, if we think about the um, graph of that, hopefully you recall that the graph of the cubic function looks something like this. And now again, let's analyze as the inputs get really, really big or really, really small, what happens, right? So we see that as x goes to positive infinity, so as we go to the right again, it looks like the graph is shooting up. So we're seeing again that the f of x's, oops, the outputs are also going towards positive infinity. But then, as the inputs now go towards negative infinity, okay, so going to the left now, this way, but we see that as we do that, the graph shoots down. So what does that tell us about the outputs there? Right there, they're going towards negative infinity. Okay. So for x cubed, we actually saw something different. All right, we saw that, as soon as I get this all erased. We saw that as x was going towards positive infinity, the outputs were still going towards positive infinity. However, as it went towards negative infinity, in this case, then we had the outputs going towards negative infinity, okay? Now at this point, it would be a good idea to pause the video and to go through and graph each of these functions here on your calculator or on Desmos or whatever you're using to do graphing and do the same analysis, figure out what the long run behavior is. So go ahead and do that, pause the video and do that. I'll wait. Okay, did you do it? Okay. So, assuming you've paused your video, check these out. Hopefully what you saw for each of these, for x to the fourth, you hopefully saw that as x went to positive infinity, f of x also went to positive infinity, and then as x went to negative infinity, f of x went to positive infinity. For x to the fifth, you hopefully saw that as x went to infinity, f of x also went to infinity. But as x went to 
negative infinity, f of x went to negative infinity, right? And you can continue on this process, and hopefully what you saw is that for x squared, x to the fourth, and x to the sixth, the long run behavior was all the same. So as x went to positive infinity, f of x went to positive infinity. As x went to negative infinity, f of x also went to positive infinity. But for x cubed, x to the fifth and x to the seventh, you saw a different set of outcomes, right? So in those, for those ones, as x went to positive infinity, f of x went to positive infinity. But as x went to negative infinity, f of x went to negative infinity. And it turns out that if we continued on with this process, we would see the same pattern. And here's what the pattern is. If we have a power function raised to an even power, an even power, okay, then the long run behavior looks like uh, it did for x squared. Okay, so these ones up here, these are for even powers even power functions. So they'll have that long run behavior. For this set down below, so that as x goes to a positive infinity, f of x goes to positive infinity, and as x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes to negative infinity, that's what happens when you have something raised to an odd power. Okay? So that's something we're going to keep in mind. All right, let me check really quick here. Right. So one more thing on that then. So here we're given two transformed functions, okay? Uh, transformed power functions, I should say. And we know they're transformed because they have a, a coefficient out in the front. So we're going to use these, and we're not going to graph these, to figure out their long-run behaviors. So if we start with negative 2x squared, well, x squared is an even power. So we know that generally, its shape usually is going to look something like this. And I forgot to mention that on, this, on the last slide, but for all the even ones on your uh, calculator, you hopefully saw that the tails, by the tails I mean where these arrows are, they both went up like that. So normally x squared would do that. But then we have to think about what this coefficient would do to it. Well, the 2 here, that's going to stretch it, so it's going to make it more go like this. So that doesn't seem to change the long-run behavior. But what does that negative sign do? Well, that negative sign flips it over, right? So it would actually, the graph would look something like this, okay? And so what that tells us then, the long-run behavior here, is going to look a little bit different. So in this case, as x goes to positive infinity, well, we see from our graph that the graph is diving down. So this would tell us that f of x here is now going to negative infinity. And then as x goes towards negative infinity, so now we're going the other direction, we can look at the graph and we again see that it's diving down. So we know that our f of x's there are going towards negative infinity. Okay? So that would be our long run behavior for the first one. And notice we did that without a calculator. All right, let's look at the next one then. So now we have uh, h of x equals 5x cubed. Now here we have an odd power. And again, I forgot to mention this on the last slide. But hopefully you noticed as you graph these that all the odd ones kind of had a shape that looks something like this, right? So that's what made their long run behavior all be the same. Now here we have this five being attached to the x cubed. So what is that gonna do? Well, that's gonna stretch it, right? Vertically stretch it so it's gonna look like this. But notice, did that change the long run behavior? Looks like it did not, right? So in this case, our long run behavior for this function would be the same as all the other odd powered ones. So we'd have as x goes to positive infinity, h of x here is going towards positive infinity. But as x goes towards negative infinity, h of x also goes towards negative infinity. OK, 
Okay, that would be our long run behavior there. All right, that's all for now. Thank you for watching.